In this video, I'm going to talk about some common operations that we can use with string and character data. So one thing that's special about strings is that they are an object in C++. If you've used the C language, you've worked with char star strings, and these are different from those because these are actually an object. And that means by being an object, it blends functions with the data. With the char star strings, we don't have any built-in functionality, so we have to do all of the memory management ourselves. And there's some things with char star strings that make working with them a little bit complicated and tedious. With objects, we have a wrapper around the data for the functionality, and we can say that it's smart data. With a string object, we can ask the object or the string for information about itself, like what is your length? Or we can ask the string object to modify itself, so we could say that we want it to change its third character to a W. Now with string objects, the object has data internally, and the data of a string is a sequence of characters. Each character in the string has an index, and the first character's index is zero, and so the last index is the length minus one. So if we take this example string here, the name of the variable is greeting, and the contents of the string are H-E-L-L-O, period. So this string has six characters. The first character, the H, has an index of zero. The last character, the period, has an index of six minus one, or five. Now you may find it a little odd that the first index is zero, but as you work with computer science more, you'll see there are a number of places where we make the first item or we begin counting with zero. And it has to do with the way that data is stored internally in the computer and the way that the processor accesses it. So for now, we'll just accept that the first item's index is zero, and the last item's index is length minus one. So let's see how we can use string objects in some common functions with them. So again, using this example string named greeting with the contents hello period, whenever I want to use one of the functions that belongs to this class or type of object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the name of the variable, greeting in this case, followed by a period, and then the name of the function with any parameters. So it looks something like this. Let's say I want to get the string's second character. The character itself is a char data type. I'm going to take the string greeting I'm going to put the dot operator after it, and the function to get a single character is called at. This function's parameter is the index number, and so it's going to read as greeting dot at one. So I want to get the character with an index value of one. In looking at the string hello, one is going to be the second character because index zero is the first character. And so if I execute the function greeting dot at one, I'm going to get a, the letter E returned. Another common example is getting the length of a string. The length function doesn't have a parameter, so we're just going to use empty parentheses, but I'm going to use the same format here greeting.length with no parameters. It's going to look at the data internally to that object, 
see that there are six characters and it's going to assign the number six to the integer variable length. Another thing I can do with strings is I can use the plus operator to combine strings. So still working with that string called greeting, I can create a new string called new greeting and it's going to have a value of whatever contents are in the greeting string plus the literal goodbye. Now technically I'm not adding two string objects here, but I can take one string object and add a character literal to it and create one larger string. So after I put greeting with the string goodbye or string literal goodbye, if I now go and display the new string, new greeting, I'm going to see that it's hello period from the first string and then goodbye from my string literal. And now I have a new larger string. Now that plus sign up there, we normally think of as something we use with addition or mathematical operations. But with objects, we can take a mathematical symbol like a plus sign and overload that operator to have it do things like combine strings. Another thing I can do with strings is I can replace part of the string. And here I'm replacing a single character. So for my greeting string that was hello dot or hello period, I've decided I want to change the punctuation from a period to an exclamation mark. The greeting string has six characters in it, so the last index, or the index of the last character, is 6 minus 1, or 5. And so I can say greeting dot at 5 and assign the exclamation mark character to that particular character with the assignment operator, the equal sign. Now, if I display the string after I make the modification, I'm going to see that now it says hello, exclamation mark. So if I want to sum up the common functions that I just talked about, and there are many more string functions available than these, but these are probably the most basic. I have two functions here for accessing information about the string data, and that's the at function and the length function. And then if I want to modify the string, I can use the assignment operator, and I can also use the addition operator or plus operator to concatenate strings. Now that's all working with strings, but what about individual characters? Because a character, or rather a string, is made up of multiple characters. Well, there are some special character functions that we can use, and they're part of a library called cctype, character type from the C language, or cctype. In some IDE environments, you don't even have to bring this library in. For example, in Visual Studio, I don't have to include this header file to be able to use these functions, but that might not be true with all environments. But the functions in this library all operate on a single character. So let's say I have a variable called letter, that it's type char, it can hold a single letter. I can operate on that char, or, or rather on that letter variable, or I can operate character functions on a particular character inside a string. So in this example, if I had a string named my string, if I say my string dot at five, I can do an operation on the character that is at that index number five. 
One big difference in these character functions from the string functions is these are not object-oriented functions. We're not going to put a period between the name of the variable and the function we're calling. Instead, with my character functions, the character is actually going to be the function's parameter. So, what does this look like? Well, here are a few classification functions. And the purpose of all of these functions is to decide if a particular character is one of these, or has one of these characteristics. So when I call one of these functions on a character, I'm going to get a return value of either true or false. So for example, the first one is alpha. If I use the isAlpha function and I pass a character in the parentheses as a parameter to that function, it's going to check that character to decide whether it's a value between lowercase a to z and uppercase a to z. Similarly, with isDigit, is that particular character a number between 0 and 9? And there's a variety of other ones that you can do as well. These are just five of some of the most common ones. So let's see what it actually looks like. Let's see, I have a program where I'm going to get input from the console window. And I'm going to store one character in a variable called input. After I get that variable in after rather after I get that value in the character input I can test it and I can find out if what the user entered was a letter so I can say is alpha and then pass that variable input as a parameter to the is alpha function if the user typed a letter then this function will return true and then I will execute this statement inside the if statement. But let's say the user entered a 5. That won't be an alpha character. So the expression in the if statement will be false. And then I'm going to go to the else. And now I'm going to test that same character to see if it's a digit. Well, if the user did type a 5, is digit will be true, and now I'll display digit. But if the user didn't type either a letter or a digit, both of those are false. And then I'm going to hit the next else. It is a trailing else because I'm not testing for any other conditions. So if the user typed a space or they typed a tilde or some other character, then I'm going to hit this third C out statement and I'm going to display other. So those are several common classification functions whose purpose are to determine if a particular character is one of these things, true or false. Other types of functions have a job of actually converting the character. So here are two where I can convert a character to either a lowercase character or an uppercase character. Let's say I have a string variable and the variable is called name and the contents of the string are all lowercase b-o-b. If I wanted to capitalize this name meaning I want to change the first letter to a capital letter and leave all of the other letters the same, I can say name dot at zero, meaning I'm wanting to change that first character in index zero. And what am I going to put in there? It's going to be the result of this two upper function. So the two upper function takes whatever's inside the parameter and converts it to an uppercase. Here, I want to get the very first character out of the name Bob. That's going to be index zero. So I'm going to say name dot at zero. 
That gets me the lowercase b, the very first b in Bob's name. That's the parameter to the two upper function. The two upper function will convert the b to an uppercase b and then reassign it back to the same position in the string name. Finally, I'll display the new version of the variable name and I'll see that Bob's name is now capitalized. So let's see how we can use this when we're working with menus. And here I'm displaying the dessert menu that I used in the video about menus and switch statements. And I'm showing three options here for a user to select from. And these options are lettered A, B, and C. Now, if I don't convert the user's selection or the user's choice to an uppercase letter, then I might just be testing for capital A, capital B, and capital C. And to a user, and really in reality, a lowercase a is pretty much like an uppercase a in this type of context. And so if the user types a lowercase a, I don't really want to reject that selection. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to read in the user's choice and save it in the variable choice. And then I'm going to immediately assign the uppercase version of choice back to that variable choice. Now the user can enter either a lowercase a or an uppercase a if they want to select cookies. And then I don't have to write a more complicated if statement or switch statement to evaluate whatever the user entered. So this can be a very handy way to have a little more flexibility in what a user enters without having to write a lot more um, options in our if and switch statements.